All right. All right. All right. We have, is it live? Yes, it's live. Is it live with the chat open? It's live. It showed up on my, my time thing. Okay, but is the chat open? That I don't know. Hold on a second. Because to be honest with you. There it is. Not sure how I did that. Oh, we got 15 viewers in the house. Hey, y'all. Hey, we're trying to enable the group chat. So just want to say good evening. Welcome back. Um, today has been a very interesting turn of events. I'm so glad that everybody had a chance to tune in. Um, are you checking to see if the chat's on first? Okay. Yes, Hang on, guys. We're just trying to make sure that the live chat's on. Yeah. The chat's on, right? I can see it in my phone. Okay, as long as you can see it in your phone, that's all that really matters. I couldn't see it really last time anyway. Yeah. Okay, so the chat's on, folks, so we're ready to get started. You ready to do this? I'm ready. All right. Good evening, everybody. I am Mr. Brando. And I am April BB. And this is the reinstatement of the Iraqi Dinar World News event. I have a lot of news today to bring to you guys, and I am so excited about the last couple days. If you guys haven't been reading, and I know a lot of you haven't had a chance to read, it has been a whirlwind of excitement. First of all, thank you to all the viewers out there that, that stood up. We had so many more likes and dislikes, so many people asking questions. We tried to answer each and every one of those questions on both those forums, it is you guys. I am your host and she is your host. But every time you are here, you guys are my special guest. So I welcomed you to your platform. This is for the people, by the people, and we're getting ready to get straight to the news. So if you got questions, Mrs. BB is going to go ahead and answer them or get them on the board so we can get started. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the reports. I'm sorry about the late start tonight. We both work regular jobs. I work a little later than she does. I needed a few minutes to gather my thoughts and get myself in the frame of mind about Iraq, and I apologize, but I am here, and I'm ready to deliver to you guys what I know. Um, first thing that I do know, are you ready, Miss Beebe? How was your day? I'm sorry. I'm so rude. I'm so rude. <laughs> my day was very busy. What did you do today? Worked. Oh! Worked. 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 Work. My day starts at 5 a.m. Gosh, so you guys know we're Central Standard Time here, and I apologize for the late start. Wednesday, so you guys know that this podcast is going to be every Monday about 9 o'clock, 9.30 latest. Uh, it's going to be every uh, Wednesday, approximately 7 o'clock, every Friday at about 7 o'clock. So if you wonder what time to tune in, if you miss one, just know that those are the times that we'd like to do our podcast. I hope everybody's ready. I am ready to get started. The Council of Ministers directed the implementation of the decision to prevent the import of some agricultural product, Iraq News. This came from a news source, and I'm going to try to get Ms. Beebe to post all the links. I tried to collect them all over the last couple of days in the description section so you know that this isn't my opinion, this isn't my words. This is what's being posted. This is what's being printed. I want you guys to know that. We are not gurus. We are not into guru stuff. I'm all about news and stuff that's factual and what's really going on. And also, some of the, the links that you see, you'll have to translate to English because mm -hmm. they are in, what, Arabic? Right. They are in Arabic, so I apologize for them, but they are in Arabic. And you guys just wait. I got a bomb to drop on you guys in a little bit. So you're going to have to stay in and you're going to have to listen. The more Iraq starts to utilize their own resources, meaning that they're going to start utilizing their own agriculture, fixing their own water problem, fixing their own energy crisis, the more they become self-sufficient, the more we start to see the private sector open. And we're going to hit upon that in a little bit. But the more that they do those things, the more we're going to see these guys have to start being implementation into an international stage. Why? You think because they go inward, you don't go outward. But that's not true. The more they go inward for basic stuff, you know, tomatoes and figs. Figs are a huge, and dates. Dates are a huge staple in their diet. Whenever they have id and all these other big holidays, they start id with a date and they end id with a date. It is a very sacred thing. They have all types of dates for different things. So I know this seems like a very minuscule art article, but this is huge. The more these guys do for themselves, the better they are. And they also need to pay those contractors. 
They don't want to be paid in any other currency but IQD. These are Iraqis. They stay for the Iraqi people. Okay. Number two, Amiri to nominate new candidate for interior ministry instead of Fiyad. Now, why would Amiri dump Fiyad? Amiri is a Iranian puppet. We all know that. So is Maliki. There are nine people that actually control the whole Iraqi government. Amiri is one of them. Maliki is another one of them. Fiyad is another one of them. I'm throwing Fiyad out there. I'm going to get to him too. Fiyad is an Iranian puppet, okay? The more we know that, the more I'm going to explain to you what's going on and how that pertains to you and your investment. Did you have something to say, babe? No, 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 no. Okay. I mean, unless you want me to go through the chat and people have questions. Okay, okay. y'all, please just hold your questions for a few minutes. I'm going to get to the bomb, and then you can ask all the questions you want. But let me get through this few minutes. So now, why would Amiri, who is an Iranian puppet, relinquish the two key positions that would make Iran a key player in Iraq? He's not. It's all smoke and mirrors. He's trying to make it look one way, and it's not that way because he wants to drop a bomb later, but he can't. See, the problem with Iran is they want to meddle in Iraq because of those sanctions. As long as Iran is under U.S. sanctions, they are under a huge boot heel. I mean, boot heel. They are in tremendous trouble. We are just trying to crush their oil business. We're not trying to starve their people. That's not what it's point. We're trying to get the bad people out of power and the right people in power so those people can flourish. But this is not about Iran. This is about Iraq. How does that pertain to us? Because now Iran's coming back and saying, we want to do business in, you know, like in some dinars because we don't, can't do business in U.S. dollars, but you can do business with we need to have a total separation of the two. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If we have those two separate, those two brothers got to work for themselves. Iran needs to pay their punishment. Iraq needs to step up. These guys could be at the forefront of the international stage if they just step up. So you ask yourself, why would they do that? They would do that because if they relinquish those key positions, then everything moves forward. But they don't want everything to move forward, so it's all smoke and mirrors. The Reform and Reconstruction Alliance wants the candidates for the Ministers of Interior and Defense to be efficient military personnel. What did I tell you last podcast? Who were the two people that they recommended for the last podcast? When you see this thumbnail at the end, you're going to get the joke. But the joke's on everybody because I called this and I told you a week ago. I told you a week ago what was going to happen. I'll read it one more time. The Reform and Reconstruction Alliance wants the candidates for the Minister of Interior and Defense to be efficient military personnel. So the comment said, adding that new candidates for the material interior ministry is a retiree who contributed to the liberating, liberation of Iraq from ISIS. Perfect. We love that. We want that liberation. That is a huge feat, liberating yourself from a whole terrorist organization. And just for you guys, I print out a picture of me, Amiri. That's Amiri faking and shaking like he wants Iraq to be sovereign. Like he wants them to do what they need to do to step to the United States. But this is an evil man, one of the nine evil deep state people that are there. I hate that word deep state, but he's one of the evil people that are there trying to stop our progress and inhibit our blessing from coming forward because this man is bad. Okay. Members of the Finance Committee, MP Abdullah, that his committee will seek stabilize the hold of the contracts and provide grades in the budget. We talked about the budget going forward. Now, the budget's a very crucial part of our investment because not only what they allocate towards things, whether it be in billions, trillions, or gazillions, but how they use that money is more important to us because we don't want that money squandered, right? Because whoever controls the Minister of Interior controls the whole path of Iran. This is where we screwed up last time when President Bush stuck with Maliki and it was a bad thing. When we went with Maliki, we didn't know that he was a tyrant until he showed his true colors. Remember, absolute power is absolute. When you put someone with that much power and that much billions, what they do, they're corrupt. They stole. It's like telling a kid, don't take those cookies. He's a kid. I'm going to take me a cookie. And he realized you don't notice. He takes him another cookie. Imagine taking 900 billion cookies. This guy is off the chain rich, super rich, so rich that he's almost corrupted this country to the point where we can't get in because he has people at mid-level jobs, higher level jobs, and he is well revered because he pays like he weighs. Everybody wants to be around somebody that's going to give them money because in a place with no money, the person with the gold does what? They have the power. They have the rule. Golden rule. Remember that. Follow the money. You'll follow the path of Iraq, and you'll also start to understand why this investment is crucial and why the players in it are even more crucial than just what's going on today. So 
My friend Ibram that I met the other day through this chat told me Ibram, that the GOI says that there will be 10,000 jobs in there in the next couple months. But in reality, there were not 10,000 jobs. Only 2,000 jobs were offered starting tomorrow. Now, that is tomorrow our day that there has been protesting in Basra, and Basra is a hot spot because, remember, it's war-torn. And remember that people are really trying to get, like, water and electricity and everything going there. With the processing going on there, what happens, he says, is whenever there's protesting in Basra, that's when the USD becomes in greater demand. Now, you say, well, the USD becomes greater demand. Well, why would it? Because Iraq hasn't stopped the MCP. The MCP, for people that don't know, is the multiple currency practice. That means that when you go to the marketplace, you could use a dollar or you could use a dinar. We need the MCP to be completely stopped. We need for Iraqis to use their dinar. We don't want them to use the dollar. We need them sufficient on their own currency. But they're using the dollar because the dollar holds more weight, correct? Right. So if you just reinstated your currency and gave it some purchasing power, then it would be different. Exactly. But these people are too slow or... They're slower to the game than we want them to be. And trust me, my contacts from Iraq don't speak in terms of RB or RI. I need to clear that up right now. They speak in terms of, is there a liquidity problem? Is there a problem with me getting change? Is there a problem with me getting basic goods and services? Is there a problem with me being able to um, uh, go to the bank and get, you know, a million dollars worth of change so my children can buy bread? That's the way they talk. They have no clue or don't understand what we're talking about. They talk, when are we going to receive purchasing power? When is that time going to happen for us? And I'm telling you that time is coming sooner than later. That is my belief. I could be wrong. I, I want you to know that this is just from my heart. This is my opinion. But I believe that time for purchasing power is coming soon. Now, Ibrahim told me that there were 2,000 jobs that were supposed to start tomorrow. And because of the protesting, they started using the USD more. Now, that tells you a lot that the MCP is still placed. Now, 12 months ago, he said that he was hired in Basra Oil Company as a mechanical engineer. Now, I am not a mechanical engineer, but I know that that is a high-level position that requires a whole lot of education, right? Mm -hmm. Now, he said that 500 people, qualified, educated people, applied for the job. What does that tell you also? That when you see pictures of Iraq on the news, all you see is these uneducated people throwing rocks or in the dirt. No, this is a young generation of people that are out there educating themselves and trying to better themselves and get jobs that will allow them to feed their kids, their wives, their girlfriends, their whatever, because it is important that education gets them to the forefront of a better work environment. They're not all laborers. They're not all people that are deadbeats. These are people that really want to better themselves. What does that tell you? If you're educated, you're not ignorant, right? right? right. Qualified. He applied for a job that 500 people applied for. Three people got hired. Three. He being who? Ibram. Oh, okay. Ibram got hired. Three people were hired. That's it. Mm -hmm. Where are the jobs? Now, I'm going to bring you back to this. Where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? All of you, that should be your question on chat. Mr. Brando, where are these jobs going and who has these jobs? I'll get to that. Now, less jobs, more people. Now, we know this about the donor conference. They told the Iraqi people that you want this $30 billion, you can have it, but you got to have first a fully seated government. And because we've got over a hundred or a thousand companies that want to come into Iraq, you must do what? Employ 50% of Iraqis to these jobs. Now your disenfranchised youth has somewhere to go. Do you see how all this ties together? Y'all, this ain't rocket science. This ain't that I'm so smart that I just grab these ideas out of thin air. I'm not that smart. But I am smart enough to follow the money and follow the education. And I have this smoking hot co-host right here. So, you know, it makes me look really, really smart also. Now, knowing that we know about the donor conference, knowing that we know that there's 500 position, or 500 job applicants and three positions, knowing that Iraqis are going to have to get their money on that donor money to rebuild their country. Now, that will do so much for them. Follow the money, follow Iraq. See, the correlation between... That and their education is so crazy. Remember, when you have an educational process like they do, what they tell you is they used to only have night classes or day classes. Pardon me. They used to only have day classes. Hey, John. 
You guys watching? Glad you guys are out there. Glad you're here. Yeah. Daza, glad you're here. Yes, a larger part of our, our, our Iraqi citizens are illiterate, John. You are correct. But you're incorrect in knowing that there's a large populace of people that are educated, that are the youth. They're not the older people. They're the youth that are trying to get better jobs. This came straight from an Iraqi. This didn't come from me. This isn't from an article. This came from Ibram. He's on the chat board. You can see exactly what he's saying. Now, non-educated youth would be different than educated youth. That's why they're protesting for reforms. That's why they want reforms. They want to be able to work. They're not looking for government handout. That's what everybody keeps thinking, that they want to live on the government tip. They are not like the entitlements here in the States. They want to do better for themselves. I'm sorry. I got to take a sip here. Mm. Now, I'm going to hit you guys with something that's going to take a second, so I need your guys' forgiveness. The title of this is from, and this is called Kozar Nazard, a reporter profile, and I'll leave the, I'll, I'll make sure Mrs. DB puts the description down. I ran bank militias. You got to follow me on this, y'all. I ran back militias, slam Iraqi PM, sacking of security advisor, call the decision illegal. I'm going to make this so clear that you understand as a people, okay? A body sacked a fellow that was in this position. Does anybody know who this position is? If you do, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Ms. B. She don't know. I know. I'm going to tell you who. It is Fiad. A body got in his feelings a few years ago when Fiad was in charge of this prominent iran back position position and he knew he was corrupt he was stealing he was doing all this bad stuff and guess what a body fired him don't believe me do your homework thank you dennis frazier thank you thank you thank you now the coalition with the most pmf support is the al fatah coalition which is headed by hadi al amir remember earlier what i tell you about amir bad man who mm -hmm. i told you there were nine people that controlled the whole government Amiri and Fiat, mm -hmm. a contender of a body's I'm to lead the next government recently, Fayyad has reportedly expressed his preference for Amiri over a bot. A body. Why? Because a body fired his ass and he didn't have a job. Now, what they're telling you in this article that firing Fiat is a serious sign and a new indicator that outgoing prime minister is dealing with security services and other state bodies according to his personal interests. Or I would put a caveat by that. Or is this the interest of the Iraqi people as a whole? I thought our body was a fool. I didn't know a body was actually smarter than a fox. He fired Fiat because I think he saw the greater picture. With him out of the picture, he might have been the only thing stopping a whole Iranian-backed corrupt militia coming back in and having to be able to the accessibility to rape and plunder a $30 billion purse. I think a body was smart as a fox. Now, Faith's statement accused the body of sacking Fiat because the latter no for longer felt he was benefiting from the incumbent prime minister staying in power. These decisions are illegal. Remember what I'm saying right now, folks. This is huge. These decisions are illegal according to the Constitution because Fiat has responsibilities akin to that of a minister, which is a political post, similar to that of the Minister of Defense and the Interior. So Fiat has a job. You guys see him in here? Fiat has a job, equivalency to a minister. See, this guy was so corrupt, he couldn't get a regular job. They had to get him a job in politics because he has so much corruption going on and controls so many Iraqi uh, government officials. They had to get him in government to keep him around. You see what I'm saying? Are you connecting the dots here? Are you seeing where I'm going here? So they gave him a job. Abadi says, hold on, this dude's a corrupt SOB. We got to get rid of him. He's no good. Abadi fires him. Okay, now these decisions are what? Illegal. This is really interesting. Why is it illegal? He's the prime minister at that time. He can fire hire whomever he chooses. Right. But they deemed it something. I'm going to get to that. Today, this is the bomb. If you haven't been listening, pay close attention. I'm going to read this statement. Thank you to Matak in his entirety, and I'm going to let you hear what he says. Because you guys want to hear about these guys that I say, well, I have a source here. Or I have a source there. I'm full of crap or whatever. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not. This is how I know this. Listen to this statement. And this definitely link will be in the description later. 
Iraq, the, pro the administrative court issued a judicial ruling nullifying, nullifying of the former prime minister, al body and decide to allow Faleh Afiyad to exercise his post as advisor to the National Security Council. Fiyad office has said, also he will be back as head of parliamentary militia, PMU and national security. Boom! So, so basically they overturned it. They overturned it. They said, you got a job. You cannot be minister of interior if you already have a job that's what? Equal to a minister. And I told y'all that. I knew that was coming. And I'm going to show you something else. I'm excited, babe. I'm sorry. I'm excited. I want to play this for you. Now I will hush. You guys are saying I'm getting too crunk. Baby says I'm getting out of control. You're just a little loud. Oh, I'm loud. I'm sorry. I want them to be able to hear me. I, I hope y'all can hear me. This is exciting news. Listen. It's correct. Uh, they they will cancel all the decisions of uh, former prime minister. So that uh, will give us uh, hope. They will not uh, candidate him to the minister of interior at at uh, the at Thursday. You, that, want to, you want to repeat it one more time, just okay. in case people didn't hear it. Okay. This is my contact from Iraq. This is someone who I trust. Everybody asks, do I trust my contacts? I trust them so much, I play them live on live news feeds. But I want you to hear this again. I will shut up again. Yes, brother. It's correct. Uh, they, they will cancel all the decisions of uh, former prime minister. So that uh, will give us uh, hope. They will not uh, candidate him to the Minister of Interior at, at uh, the... On Thursday. Okay. What else can I tell you? What else can I tell you? What I'm telling you is real. What I'm telling you is happening. And what I'm telling you is the truth. I only know what I know, okay? This is checkmate. This is a cancellation of Afyaf's position. And I told you, that little guy that's in that thumbnail that you're going to see in a little while, his name is Gahandi Al-Assad. And you'll see that thumbnail thumbnail, excuse me, once we finalize the chat with YouTube, it takes a little while and I'll post that as the thumbnail for today. Okay. So you said to me, well, Brandon, I saw articles that kind of go against that. Um, well, how can former PM not allow him to take a new post? A body did this unconstitutionally. So a body has just been overturned by the highest court in Iraq, right? Mm -hmm. This ain't my words. Read it for yourself. I got the I got the, the link right there. My notes. I'm not making this up. I can't. This is too cool. Unconstitutionally, but why? Was a body a fool? Or was a body smart enough to see into the future that he was not A gonna be prime minister again? That wasn't gonna happen. He knew that. Okay, he knew that. Mm -hmm. And number two, maybe he didn't have the stones to be prime minister again. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Maybe he just didn't. Now with that, I bring you to my last piece of news and then we'll get to the questions. questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Abdul Mahandi will not change the candidate for ministerial session on Tuesday. Continuous dialogue for reform. Now, this comes from a Twitter feed that I follow um, that, that you guys remember the last few days that the Speaker of the House has been going around to all the blocks. He's been negotiating. This is common knowledge. Been trying to find out who to nominate for these new positions. I told you last couple of days ago, and I told you this before anybody, that the new interior minister was going to be Gandhi and the interior of defense was going to be the other guy. Both what? Remember earlier I told you they wanted, Amiri said this, not me. The Iranian puppet told you that they wanted somebody with a military background. Both of them are lieutenant colonels or lieutenant generals. Both of them are, are, are heavy duty into the sanctuary and the sanctity of Iraq, and both of them are what? Technocrats. They are not of any political party, but they are ex-militia. That changes the game completely. We knew that from the beginning that Iraq wanted a, a form of government of technocrats, not of political affiliation. This is the biggest thing I can tell you. If this didn't just make you squirm in your seat a little bit and say, well, hmm, why would they do that? Why would they do that? That tells you that Mahandi was obviously very much threatened by Maliki and Amir. He was threatened. Those people told him, we will kill you if you don't put Fiyad in our position. We control the government. 
We want our position. Now, Mahani doesn't have to. He doesn't have to put him in position because why? Our old buddy of body made it possible that he didn't have to make a decision. He could throw up his hands and say, it wasn't me, it's the court. Now they can't threaten to kill him. If they kill him, it becomes obvious. And if it becomes obvious, that trail leads right back to them, okay? So this is huge. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Maliki is under huge investigation of who? Sauter. Sauter is going to get his butt. Sauter is like a pit bull on a bone. He is going to get him. And that was the bombshell news. If that didn't make you squirm in your seat, because why? If they seat their government, and tomorrow, if they only seat six out of the eight ministers, listen to what happens. Not mayor of the Minister of Interior or Defense, but the other six, they seat them. We have a 90% fully seated government. Once they bring those two other political guys into fuck, I mean, into power, excuse me, they will have a fully seated government by Thursday. I'm not trying to tell you any different. I'm just trying to tell you that that's my belief. That's what people are telling me. That's my ear to the street. We will have a government seated by Thursday. Now, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I honestly think that's going to happen. If you have a fully seated government, then what happens? That's the million dollar question. Yeah, what next? Well, they get their money, their hands on donor money. If they get their hands on donor money, what did they just do the other day? They just amended the law of investment. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the aha moment. What did that law say? It was oppressive. Remember, I told you all this last week. It was oppressive to the investor. It wasn't It wasn't good for them. So they amended to make it better for investors to get in there and do their thing, right? Put money on the table. If I put my money in, I want my money out. I explained the whole thing called a GMROI. That is gross margin of my investment. I've got to be able to get my profits out of it and allow myself an opportunity to make money and have free capital flow. That means Americans, instead of having to go after their job and go to a auction site and trade their money in for cash in for that, which how did that look? That would look stupid. Now they can go into their local bank branch where it's legal and it's safe and exchange their money. And we, we know because of ISO 90, whatever John will tell you that if they're able to do it digitally, they don't have to go into a bank. Every transition is done electronically. That is called free capital flow, folks. If nobody put this together for you before, let me put it together for you right now. That is why you're here. If the money is now international because they got free capital flow, what does that tell you? The money's reinstated. Because you can't put money in and take money out unless it's a reinstated currency. And I don't care what anybody tells you. We're not here for an RV or an RI. We're here for reinstatement. We're here for reinstatement and for the market to drive the currency as hard as it wants to go. That's it. That's the holy grail of the holy grail. If you can't see that for what it is, I don't know how else to teach you anything else. That's the path they're taking. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Ask the question, please. I'm trying to figure well, Let's go to them if you're ready. I'm ready. I'm trying to figure out how to formulate this. Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. I'm, I'm absolutely ready for the questions. Okay, so I'm going to start from the top. Uh, Jim Jones, I, I let me get my, my reader, excuse me. Hey Jim, nice to see you. Sorry about the late response. I've heard that we were we um, exchange. I've heard that when we exchange, that we will need two forms of identification. Identification is that true? I've never exchanged any currency. Like when I've been to England or anywhere with two forms of identification, I just use my passport and went to an exchange center. I'm assuming this being under no sanctions will be the same. Plus, you can if, if your bank has a De, a De La Rue machine, you can go to your bank, correct? Sure. If the currency is international, those those codes will be laid, loaded up. You can go to any bank with a De La Rue machine and deposit that money mm -hmm. and get USD out. Okay. That's without a problem. Okay. And it's available same day? Well, now that becomes tricky. I think it would be same day, but depending on amounts, don't make me speculate. I don't know. But it, I think it might be kind of treated as a check if it's a lot of money. But if it's legit and the Daily Moon Chains is good, it's good. Lori said, I'm trying to figure out where I can buy some quick. Lori, you can just Google it. I think, you know, we, we have no connection to these companies. Nope. But there's uh, Exchange of America. There's, um, and a couple of other mm -hmm. places. I, I always tell people, check for currency exchange places in your airports. Mm -hmm. um, With certificates of authenticity. Yes. That's important. Because if they give you fraud bills, remember this country is super corrupt. If somehow a bad bill gets into your hand, you want to have be able to take repercussion statement from them. Okay. So make sure you get a certificate of authenticity. And how you explained it to me too is 
when they pass it through the De La Rue machine, mm -hmm. they can confirm, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Right then and there. It's like telling you funds are available. Okay. Okay. Next one. Glad to see you. Hey, good to see you. Who's that? Um, Milo801. Milo, what's up? Tony Ingram, it's my first time. Great job, guys. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Daza, I'm here. Hello. Daza, shout out. Much respect. Luke Diamond, I, I just found out yesterday. Very good info. Thank you so much. The best is yet to come. Always, my brother. Always. Robert, hi, guys. You just popped up today, so I subscribe. Been hey, Robert. In, been in this since 1999. Wow. Time has never been better. Yes, you're absolutely right. There's no more exciting times than right now. K-Rob in the house. Hey, K-Rob. What's up, man? Daza said the best in IQD news. That's right. Salute. K-Rob, I am at the start, but I am here. You're here for the ending. Good. Um, is this Kyle? Is that how you say that? K -Y -L -N. Mm -hmm. K-Y-L-N. That's a, a lot of damn cookies. you damn right it is. That's a lot of info right there. If you didn't follow that feed, you're going to have to replay that maybe once or twice. That was magic. That's me. That's the chef in the pot right there. Daniel Mendoza says, thank you. God bless. My my investment goes back 13 years. Amen. And, and still um, leave this in the hands of my provider and, and Lord and Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, I'm not here to hide behind these charlatans that pretend that, that God is their thing. But you know what? I really believe that we are close, folks, and pray that we are close. Brian Bo says, hello, all. Hey, Brian. Jobby says, hey, true David. Praise God. Amen. XRP, Crypto Gamer. All right. That's my boy shout, from earlier. Shout out to him. He added me earlier. He came over to my channel and subscribed in the Cryptos. Mm -hmm. He's a, a fan of XRP. Um, Jay Veteran. I'm a U.S. security contractor in Kurt, Curtis. Curtis region. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's no jobs here for the Kurds. I work closely with the Kurdish special force. I hear complaints every day. I would like for him to like reach out into our inbox and I would like to get a, a dialogue going with what's his name? His name is Jay Veteran. Jay Veteran, if you can hear my voice still, if you're still out there, please reach out to our inbox. I have a specialized group that I would add you to. And, I would like to talk to you. And he can find you uh, how? Um, he can find us by going to our inbox and the instructions will be made there. The only reason why I don't give it live is because I can't add everybody to this group. I have to add people that I think can give you guys a value that you can take away with you. So don't think that I don't want you all there. I want to see you right there. When I look down and see 160 people live, then I know the message is getting out about the, the things that we're trying to do. No one else out there right now talking about IQD opens up their chat to all the trolls and ridicule, but my people, Mr. Brando and Mrs. Beebe's people have been nothing but kind. I appreciate all of you, I love all of you, and I'm just a steward. I'm just trying to give you the news as I get it, and she's just trying to help me with it. Uh, Kawazi? Kawazi, uh -huh, Kawazi, uh -huh. There was so many Iraqis educated in upstate New York colleges. Little intel of this has leaked out. Right, in Detroit also, Kawazi, remember, they flocked around Detroit big time. There's a big Middle Eastern, um, big Middle Eastern presence in Detroit. I was just there twice last year. Huge amount of Middle Easterns there. Sweet people. I don't know why they get such a bad rap. They're not all uneducated, ignorant people. Some of them are very, very good. They get a bad rap. Griffin at dawn says, "You two are genuine." Article. Hello to USA Houston. <laughs> USA Houston, stand up. H-Town, for real, I we are here really trying to do real good work. That's it. Jeanette says, hi, glad I found you guys. You're great. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, let's see, let's see. Bambi says, checkmate. Jose gives us the thumbs up. Griffin and Don says, wonderful technocrats. The, yep. the body is very screwed. Well, no, a body helped us, right? man. Is it, is that yeah, a body is very shrewd. True. A body ain't stupid. I kept trying to put that in my mind. I didn't like a body. I was one of his biggest critics. I thought he was weak. I thought he was this. But what a body did, maybe unbeknownst of him, totally helped us in our investment. Griffin at dawn, after the fully seated government, this mm -hmm. will activate the laws on the books. Mm -hmm. 
they are also looking for other resources to what is this um they're looking aggregate for, their wealth right of course because what's wealth. the very first thing, rule of business diversify and multiply oil is not their only thing when i see these people out here that only say well all they got is oil no oil is the only thing they tapped into oil is not these guys' only promise to the world they have tourism they have natural gas they've got um national artifacts that are historical and biblical in sense they've got super smart educated youth that are going to go out there and help the world these guys are not lazy they're not unignorant they're not they just need a chance just like we do and we need those people to get a chance uh milo says can you tell us if there is going to be an international rate screen rate or is it just a straight exchange of what the rate will be or can there be uh can it be negotiated this is when we go to the bank. Okay, so people have asked me that a lot. This is my belief about that. If you go out and look at Forex or you go look at somebody else, there's a rate. I don't know. I don't believe in back screen rates. I don't believe in front screen rates. I don't believe in that. I believe in there's a rate. The bank's going to put points on a rate. That's where you're going to be able to exchange. I believe that that rate's going to be known and knowable to you on Forex. And I'm going to bring it to you because I'm going to figure out a way how to post it up and say, look, the IQD is worth X. Take it to your bank. We're going to all split the screen. Bank of America says this. Wells Fargo says this. Chase says this. And then we'll be able to go negotiate our own deal. Hold on. Because mm -hmm. so, everybody keeps asking kind of the same question. So okay. I was going to put out there okay. a link to – I. And I just go out there and Google Exchange of America. Uh -huh. um, let me see if I can hold this up to the screen. Okay. Okay. Here yeah. you go, y'all. Let me give it to you like this. This is what my partner, John, says. You can only negotiate the spread. Okay. You can only negotiate the spread. This comes from my partner, John. Shout out to John's outhouse. Shout out to IQD chat. But John tells me from John's outhouse, this is his group, and I'm a member of it, that you can only negotiate the spread. The spread meaning the difference between the, the rate and what the bank is selling it for. So meaning that if I go in there with a million dollars and the spread is X, this, let's say they want to take out 100,000 fees. I may well say, well, I won't give you a million dollars. I'll only give you 700,000. They may say, well, they want more. If you can negotiate the spread, you say, if I give you a million dollars, I'm not going to give you 100,000. I'll give you 35,000. That he's saying you can negotiate, okay? So don't think that there's a... Uh, uh end all be all to where this is at but we're going to bring you the best financial people out there when we're available because we're not them we are not financial advisors and this is another thing we are not currency pumpers i'm not out here trying to tell you to buy iqd if you own iqd then you have options and i'm just trying to tell you about your options and report the news as i know it to be factual based upon stuff that is printed from the press that is it okay i am not a guru do not call me a guru i am a person out here that's just trying to tell you what i know so why is Maliki still alive? Maliki's still alive because he's part of what I'm going to call what was what were those those eight cowboy guys back in the day? Remember those the elite eight or whatever? Remember the, those, magnific the magnificent eight? Well, I'm going to call him the the corrupt nine. He's part of the corrupt nine of people that are so powerful and so deep rooted in corruption, and it's not even at a high level anymore. He's corrupt in deep level at mid level people. So imagine owning a sports franchise. You don't control the players. You control the concession. You control the hot dog vendors. You control the beer guy. That's who Maliki's controlling right now, and Sauter's after his butt. He better run because if Sauter gets a hold of him, he's going to be done. I believe that it's key to reinstatement, but I believe also that Sauter has to make him look so foolishly or so unassuming in the public eye that people are not afraid of him anymore. Um, thanks, bro. Make, make the banks compete for your business. Another rule of thumb. The banks got to compete for your business. This is what I want. You know what I want? I want a million followers. You know why I want a million followers? Because that gives us purchasing power. That allows us to go ahead and go to the bank, not as a group, but say, we know what time it is, and we're not going to get ripped off by the Rothschilds or whatever cabal or whatever else I've heard of. We're going to be able to compete and get the most money for our families and take care of the wealth as we see fit. Because once we control that wealth, the power shift changes. I'm not saying it's going to be equal. It'll never be equal, but it'll put you on a new playing field that you can make decisions that are great for you and your family. What does he mean here by just fill out the 104? What is it? Fison? Yeah. What is, yeah. What is it? Uh, Guk Gukra Legend. Could you please elaborate on that? Just fill out the 104 Finson. I've never heard of that document. 
Um, larger banks will exchange, of course, not out the gate. Carlos, I disagree. I think all banks will have an opportunity to compete on whatever level. They will have to, they will, they will all want your money deposited. Remember, they don't make money unless they either loan you money or hold your money. So I disagree with that. I'm sorry. We can agree to disagree, but I love you. No tiers or 800 numbers. That's bullshit. There's no 800 numbers, y'all. Do you think that a country is going to run an 800 number to say, George Soto, go run on my currency? No, it'll be just like he did in Europe and bankrupt them. There are no 800 numbers. That's not true. Yeah, my list says go to the mall where there is an exchange center. That's correct. To purchase, but not to deposit. Remember, they don't hold that much USD. So if you go in there and try to exchange your money back, and you probably went in, more, in there with more than, let's say, two or 3,000 IQD, they couldn't give you your money back. Mm -hmm. So be prepared to go to a major branch. If you don't have a bank account in one of the major banks, do what I did. I went to Chase. Baby went with me. Me and April BB went to the bank. I went and put $50 in a major bank. I'm a, ma I'm a member of a smaller bank because of my own personal finances. I deposited the money and I have access to major advantages because they are a bigger branch, right? Right. And then I've, I've read an article. Gosh, what is that gentleman's name? I can't remember. He's another guru out there. Um, he posted an article about Wells Fargo, like uh -huh. not going to Wells Fargo. Uh, I mean, you got to think, Wells Fargo is one of the oldest banks in America. Yeah, do they do some dirty stuff on the West Coast? Absolutely. Is that an absolute crucifixion? My wife is the financial person. I'm going to follow her lead in that. It doesn't make me weak. It's not my thing, right, babe? We've decided that. I am not the financial lead in this. I am just the person that brought the investment to her and said, look, I want to invest in this. She said, let's do it. We did it. We held the old currency. Now, when we go to trade in, I'm going to let, I'm going to take a back seat and these podcasts are going to become more about April BB and less about Mr. Brando. Okay. Well, Mr. Brando will discuss other currencies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring you the next jewel. And John, you're absolutely right. There's no such thing as a GCR or Nessera, y'all. I'm not trying to be mean to you. I know you want to see a global currency reset, but because of reasons that it would collapse governments and countries, there's not going to ever be an even playing field. That's not about capitalism. And this country is all about capitalism. I'm sorry. That's just the way life works. Ed wants to know, when when do you see the RV? Okay. First of all, I don't see an RV, Ed. I see a reinstatement. I, re I see a reinstatement when, I'll tell you the spoiler alert, when you know that Iraq can touch that donor money. When they can touch that donor money, they've got to be international. They have to be. Because if they're not, no one's going to put a dollar into Iraq if they can't get a dollar fifty out of it. There's no way. I wouldn't do it. Would you? No. We were the early adopters. This is what you call in a succession of retail. We were the early adopters. We were the people that funded them up to this point because we put thousands or, or hundreds of dollars into them and they didn't pay any dividends back. Now, when these big companies like GE and Coke and all these different people, they're going to put money into Iraq. They're going to want to get, if they put a 50 cents in, they want to get a dollar 50 out and they're not going to do business with them if they can't do that. And that's why this investment to me is the most viable thing since dot com you're gonna make a hopefully make a lot of money and you're gonna pay little fees with it that's all i can say with that well from what i've seen like i called a bank up and they still exchange vietnamese dong now there's no sanctions on vietnamese dong, right yeah. but but my point is mm -hmm. when i go to purchase they inflate the rate to purchase it that's how they're making the money. That's the spread and John's talking about. When I get ready to turn it back in, if I were to turn it in, uh -huh. they take it, it down. Less. Right? That's the spread John's telling you about. Now you're dealing with let's say a thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Imagine going in with eighty thousand. Listen to me. You're talking about as the average. You're you're the buyer. I got a thousand dollars. You hold no. You don't hold enough weight to say I need a better rate. But if you went in there with 80,000, what difference do you make? That's where you negotiate the spread. That's where you become a big deal. And that's where we're going to help you because we're going to say, this is what we did. I'm not telling you what you to do. This is what we did. And this is what we got. And you can go from there. It's up to you to make your own decision to be your own person. And I think kind of what we're talking about answers Griffin's question. Griffin at Dawn is asking, how will those with significant amount of dinar proceed? What do you mean by significant? Like a any, brick? Any advice? Just well, I mean, the thing about 
I mean, if I'm understanding, what, okay, read that to me one more time so I make sure I understand. How will those with significant amounts of dinar proceed? Well, out the gate, you'll exchange enough to get well. We've always talked about this. Whatever that get well to you means. Pay off all your bills, be debt free, whatever. Pay off your homes, whatever. Walk away from your job. Walk away from your job. Start a new company. Put money into your company. I don't know. And then you're going to watch the next, in my opinion, 30 to 60 days. Because it's either going to go way up, steady, or way down. When you say 30, 60 days, what do you mean? I mean that that that, that float, what everybody talks about, that dirty float is going to take it to where it needs to be. In my opinion, you got a 30-day window. That's my opinion. I don't know to be true. I don't. If somebody out there knows what Kuwait did, tell me. I don't know. But in my opinion, once it goes up, it's going to go higher because they want those three zero notes. So is it kind of like the stock exchange, right? Oh, absolutely. And let's say, you know, a stock may shoot up, right, yeah. in a matter of a day. But then the next day, it kind of levels out. It takes 200 points. Or just levels out or sure. goes down. Sure. You know, because let, let, let's say you buy Coca-Cola. It's mm -hmm. $100 today. It went up 150 by the end of the day. Tomorrow you go in there, it's 125. You see what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. The fluctuation. Exactly. You gotta kind of play it like you would a stock. Now, I've heard this, I don't know it to be true. If you're dealing with significant, now when I say significant, your family's wealth is at stake. Okay. So please listen to me. If what you feel is significant, okay, I want you to go out and find a lawyer that's versed in finances and in trust and take them with you to your exchange. Don't rely on Mr. Brando, okay? Mr. Brando's not your guy. I want you to hire a man or a woman that is qualified to walk in that bank with you and know that you have significant amounts of money. Significant meaning whatever you feel to be significant because you're going to pay a fee. But you go negotiate some rates, okay? John says that big bucks require an attorney, in his opinion. Mm. I can't say is he wrong. He holds a brick. Okay. Just saying. Okay. Um, and I saw the brick. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I know it's true. Yeah, We're almost 195 yeah, yeah. people in our yeah, chat. Griffin Griffin's talking about a brick as well. When he says he says significant, he means a brick. So. Okay, Griffin. If you're on that level, I, God bless you first. But if you're on that level, please don't tell the attorney what you want to exchange, but be forthcoming and be very transparent in what you want to do with your wealth and tell him that you need advice. OK, you need help. Um, Griffin asked if he's wondering, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, will this be the only currency that goes? No. Um, he asked me, he said, Miss mm. Beebe, <laughs> that's a question from moi. Uh, I think there will be more to go. The question is, which one? My friend, Mr. Frazier, says that he believes that there's five or six countries that are going to be on an evil playing field. If you want Mr. Frazier's opinion, I shall give it, but I'll only give it if he allows me to give it. So, okay, would you say Dong is the next one to go? Yes. Okay, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. That's our play. I want to take you from a millionaire to a billionaire with Dong. That's my goal. Not Zim, not yet. Zim's gonna get you there one Zim, day, but not yet. Zim, they're not together yet. Man, they, they can't stop. Man, they're worse than Iraq. Yeah. Johnny are. says third world countries, Kuwait dinar at three dollars and twenty one cents. Could you imagine? They want to be on par with what they were before. Iraq was at three dollars and twenty two cents when Saddam was in power. They've already told the IMF and the uh, other World Bank people they want to be on par with what they were before. That's putting them at three dollars and twenty two cents. So take whatever you got and times by 322 and you're in there like swimwear. Just imagine. Even if you got 100 IQD. What would you do with 322,000? What would I do? Yeah. Pay off some real estate, pay off some bills. But anyway, enough about me. Uh, Tom Collins says, I've been sitting on dinars for years and waiting for the world to wake up. I worry about the, t the tax I'd have to pay on it to my corrupt government. Oh, you ain't never lied. They tax us on everything. Okay, but let me it, ask you a question. Is it, wait, he's not done yet. Okay, I'm sorry, John. It, is it taxable in the US to do the switch? That to me is the million and fifty zillion dollar question. I don't think it's taxable. That's my opinion. I've been to Europe, I've been to the, the Caribbean, I've been to Central America, I've been to some Asianic countries. I was never taxed on exchange, were you? I was charged a fee, right. but I was never taxed. And normally, like when you go to other countries, the fee is embedded. 
in that, exchange. That's why I gave that as an example with the dong. Right. It's normally embedded. And I know when you're traveling to other countries, well, I'm just a planner. Maybe that's me. Well, but say it, baby. I, you, you, you order your currency. I order it for where I'm going to. Right. So you can, you know, you in advance, you call your bank, talk to them, they'll fill out a form, mm -hmm. and that's it to purchase. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, that's all I know, really. Okay, well, then plan your event, know what you're going in with, know what you want to get out of it, and hire the proper people to put them in place to protect your assets as you see fit, right? Right. In the story. What else? Um, we got Tony, 200 of our closest friends in here. Yeah, Tawny says, uh, Kurt's paying people. Who? Tommy, that's the, the oh the Kurds are paying people. Kurds yeah, people, yes. there was a vicious rumor out, Tommy, that the Kurds implemented Article One Forty. Well, the only problem with that is the last time I checked, the Kurds lived in Iraq, and Iraq controls their oil, so there can't be any One Forty unless Iraq says there's one. Mister Joda says any Q followers. What's Q followers? What's Q anon? Is he talking about Q anon? Not sure. It just says Q followers. Uh, Mr. Joda, if you could please elaborate on what a Q follower is. Oh, and then Jay Veteran says, I'm a Q follower. I don't know what that is. I don't know what a Q follower is. I can tell you that I was approached by the Illuminati. Oh my gosh. Did Remember that? Respond? I was approached by the Illuminati. And, that was funny. And he actually responded. I did. I responded because I want to know what the hell they're talking about. Nothing. And then King OSO says, can we get a summary? A summary of what? A summary of today's events is this. If you want me to break it down to its simplest form, Iraq is going to be in its own self self reliant state here soon. They're limiting the amount of imports and exports, and they're trying to become more self sufficient. On number two, Amiri is going to find himself with the Maliki without a job because we're going to hire two lieutenant ex lieutenant generals to fill the positions of the interior of ministry and the material of defense. With that, it's going to put out Maliki and his political will, so Sauter will prosecute him at the highest level. If you want another picture of Amiri, here he is. He's an ass. Now, with that, <laughs> what, my jerk? He's an ass. He's an ass. Now, with that, the Finance Committee wants to go ahead and pass the 2019 budget early. Why? Because they need to know exactly. Miss Bibi, will you please show the snapshot of the gas that I showed you? Remember I told you that gas in my city was going to be a dollar 75? Mm-hmm, I'm listening. Uh, would you please show them what you found it to be today? Yeah, I'm-, I'm, I'm Or do you need to pull me, it up? Give me a second. Okay. I'm, I'm pulling it up, I'm getting to it. Yeah, because I was gonna put together a little video on my channel. It is, let me shrink this. Oops, oops, oops. Technology, sorry y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Got all these screens open. I'm trying to hold on. I said a dollar seventy-eight. Okay, I said a dollar seventy-eight. Will you please show them. Dollar seventy-five. I was wrong. Dollar seventy-five. With everybody breaking up OPEC and the energy crisis becoming more and more prevalent, like Qatar investing two hundred million in U.S. oil industry, and with people breaking away. The U.S. saying they're going to invest uh, billions of dollars into Iraq. OPEC the, is going to be a thing of the past. Now, jobs are, become, are becoming fewer, and the MCP is still in practice. Fiat's out. New guys in. A body smarter than a fox, or maybe just a vengeful guy that didn't like Fiat. And... Mahandi threatened by Maliki and Amiri and the Nine Coalition. They're just like the, what do you call them? The Vengeful Eight? The Magnificent. The Magnificent Eight. Amiri going out and uh, these guys threatening Mahandi. Mahandi throwing up his hands at this point saying, I'm safe because he didn't put the Constitution in place. And a body's unconstitutional rule is our game. And checkmate the Iraq Administration court issued a judicial ruling nullifying the decision of former Prime Minister al Abadi and decide to allow Al-Falah al, al, al to exercise his post. Meaning he needs to go back to his job. He has a damn job. Fiat, go back to your job. You ain't got no place here. And he's back to Parliament of Militias, PMU, and National Security. That is my synopsis.
Any more questions, kids? Oh my gosh, a lot of questions. Well, we'll get to them. We'll knock them out. We're gonna go for at least another ten minutes. I'll knock as many of them out. I'm gonna let you guys get some sleep. Um, I said all visible because I'm trying to. There's so many. It's starting to cut them off. And I'm sorry if I skipped anybody because it start. There's so many. And hold on, if you don't know this about us on ours, we are the only channel that opens up ourselves for debate or exposure on the questions. If we don't get to you. I know there was over 800 answers to the last two videos we did. Thank you for making it go viral with over 12,000 views in the last one, 6,000 views in the last one before that. I will go back and Ms. B will go back and we'll answer them personally, okay? We'll do our best to answer And then them. just so you know, the questions in the chat are starting to disappear, just so you know, so mm -hmm. because it's so full. Mm -hmm. um, so Carlos says it won't RV, it will float. Is that That's the exact thing. It won't RV, it will reinstate and it will float. Great example. Great example. And then, um, and and Carlos is saying at a low rate. It may be, but let the, let the market dictate where it goes to. Get yourself well, and then go from there. Sylvia says, uh, "How could it ever be one to one with forty four trillion, even with a float?" Because they have little things called national resources and uh, a bunch of money. That's the only reason I can say that. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me answer that differently. Sylvia, I get what you're saying, but their GDP to what they spend ain't the same. I mean, they're not, they're not in that big time of debt like we are. So that money can be in there and they have gold resource bigger than big, not bigger than ours, big. They have oil, they have natural gas. They're going to be fine. Uh, Richard Bank says, take one note to the bank to test it out first. Don't bring all of your dinar. Good idea, Richard. And I want to know from somebody out there, can you buy a dealer machine? I don't think that's possible. I don't think it's legal, but I mean, right. if you could tell me. So that you have okay. to financial. John says one to one is in country only. So one to one is not viable because think about it. If your money's equal to the dollar, why not just use a dollar if you have them? It has to be at least a dollar twenty, thirty or more to provide purchasing power for those people. Um Job B says Wednesday the rates are going up. Plan imposition of the markets should follow, in my opinion. I wish you're right, my friend. I can't say you are. Aren't, I don't know. I hope you're right. Reginald asked the, the question, what about the Zim and the Dong? Well, we've answered that. I believe Dong is going to go far. I believe Zim is about a year away, but we're going to keep you abreast of both. And thank you to my 200 followers that are on here right now making this go viral. I want to break the internet with your questions. That's my goal. I want to break the internet every time. With our questions i want you guys to know your voice is out there this is your show ask those questions 203 break the internet y'all go forward serena says q is vaporware too i'm not following i don't know what vaporware is and then uh sylvia posts a link i guess that's where she's getting the information from dinardouchebags.blogspot.com okay y'all let me tell you something i will never look at anything that's called me a douchebag or that well so, that's the website maybe. Demar douchebags i'm yeah. not going there are we on Denar douchebags i don't know I'm we were on Denar detectives and Denar vets the other day though that's pretty cool but we're not gurus um who wants to be a fucking guru uh Weird. is there such a thing as a qfs um, I don't know. I don't know what a QFS is. Can you please define it? Milo, please explain. Please, Milo, please define that for me so I can answer the question correctly. <laughs> XRP says, hodl your dinar, people. Look, look, XRP, this is not crypto. We don't hodl over We've here. We've been hodling it for 14 years. It's time to spend that money. Yeah, okay. Um, again, bring one note to test. You're right, Richard. Don't bring everything. Richard, don't bring everything. Bring a note. Bring one 25K note. Bring a 50K note. Bring bring whatever a you want. 5K note. Well, mama's cheap. I'm cheap. I'm frugal. Um, well, I mean, why? Shout out to the 205 of my closest friends watching this. Make this go to 20,000 views, y'all. We hit 12,000 last time. Tell your friends. Tell your groups. You want the truth? Come here. Or just you share the link. You want the truth? Come here. Share the link, please. Put it on your own page. Share if you care. Share if you care. Uh, Carlos said, I wish I could stay up and watch the rest. I got to get up early for work, but I like it. You guys are all over the place. And you know what? I got to get up at 5 a.m. So I understand, Carlos. We're about to shut this down. We got one minute till an hour. I don't like to go much over an hour, but um, 
No, we are over an hour. Right? No, we started at 920. Oh, okay. okay so we're okay. one minute from an hour. I don't like to go over an hour. Can you confirm the banks in Canada will be ready for a revalue? Baby, I'm just telling you, if the if it's international, the banks in Canada, Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, it will be on par. Israel asking. Israel, hey Israel. <laughs> you said baby. So. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying okay. you're my baby. Okay. So so he's talking to you. Can you guys share to us when Dinar will RVRI happen? Skills chimed in and said, What's up, peeps? Hey, skills, skills. Love skills. So uh the Kyle says, so as simple as going to the bank. Yeah. Going to the right bank. The right, no, it's going to the international bank that does international business. And it can't you can't go to a credit union. No. If they don't do international business, you can't order international currency. I'm just saying, would you go to Burger King and order a, uh, what do you call it? A, a Whopper? Bur no, Burger King, you order a Whopper. And McDonald's, you'd order a Big Mac. Big Mac. You can't go to Burger King and order a Big Mac. Right. I mean, Okay, so um, you're not trying to be an ass. I'm just trying to make you see it for what it before is. Before Carlos goes to bed, so Carlos says the way that they will get the three zero notes in is to float. Come in at a low rate. You will be amazed how many people will get off the roller coaster ride. And I totally agree, I agree. with you, Carlos. I agree, Carlos. Because that was my question. What a year, a year ago, ago, I got into this and I kept listening to people in these chats talking about dumping their dinar. And I was like, okay. So I had Mr. Brando explain it to me. And I'm like, all right, if I'm sitting on 200, let's say 250, uh, 250 dinar, right? And we get a float of 250,000. So they get 250,000. I'm okay. sorry. Right. So if I'm sitting on uh, 250,000, and let's say they put out a one to one, I'm not going to cash in 250K. I'm going to cash in just enough to get 10K. me straight. 10K. For a little while. So when I say get me straight, meaning, oh, I pay my overhead, pay my bills for a few months. That's it. I'm going to wait for the reinstatement, for the true amount, for that $3 and something. Then I'll cash it off. John says 90% will exchange in one day because they're and tired. They're right, weary. Right. They want to be done with this. Right. I understand your plight. I get it. But if you hold on a little longer, it will be greater later. I'm just telling you that. It'll be greater later. And I'm not pumping the currency. I'm not telling y'all what to do. I'm just telling you that when they reinstate it, when they get their donor conference, when they touch that donor conference money and they're about to reinstate to get free capital flow so these people will come international, it will happen. You will be able to do what you need to do. What happened? Why are you laughing? Oh, because skills back on the Zim thing. So uh, skills says Zim 2008 double A series question. That, okay. Now skills, we need to do a whole show dedicated just to you because you bring up that <laughs> point. 2008 or 2012 series bond note paper, same thing. I'm going to pose it to you. If I, I'm not one to name drop, but there's a certain person that I read about all the time. They say that they're talking about the last instated bond notes from Zim that are the ones that are really going to be all the ones to be exchanged. I can't answer that. I don't know. And then Carlos is saying, Zim never. <laughs> Zim never. Carlos, don't be like that. But I hear him on, on the I Zim. do. It's they a just, dark horse. Yeah, it really is. Totally, totally, totally. I believe more in buying lottery tickets in a lot of ways. And let's see. Mm, 31%. Okay, we're over by three minutes. Are we good? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions. I mean, what are they, the same questions over and over? And I don't think it's tax. They're talking about the taxes. Okay. Well, y'all, if you guys need to continue the thread, I need you to share this. I need to let everybody know what's going on. I am Mr. Brando, and I am so honored to be your host. And Ms. BB, I know my wife is so honored to be your host. Yes, I am. We are so happy to be able to share with you what we know. And she's over here just in hog heaven. I can just tell. Skill said there's gas prices in Cali is three twenty nine. Shout out Cali, that's where I'm from. Anybody from Washington State? I want a few from Washington, Vancouver, the Coob, or Portland. Shout out, you know who I am. Milo eight hundred one. It says two fifteen in Texas. What part of Texas? We're in Houston, and it's a dollar seventy five. Um, Albuquerque is two hundred five a gallon. 
I love I love playing the gas price game. I, I, I do that on my Facebook account all the time. And y'all, can I tell y'all something too, real quick? Florida is 271 a okay. gallon. Okay. Go ahead. Go tell you something real quick. I want to tell y'all, this is your channel. This is your platform. This is what we believe in. This is what you believe in. If you want this to go viral, you've got to share it. You've got to talk this. We are a group. There is no exclusive group, okay? Carlos says he thinks it's paid for 86 cents. Um, I mean, 86 cents on a phone, I'm cool with that. Yeah. And then uh, somebody else, William says a brick is 25 million dinar. Damn right. Damn right. Can I get a brick? Damn, damn <laughs> right. Who said that? Uh, William. William, shout out to William. You've been watching. Yeah, he said William French. Hey, we late to the game, but we ain't late. We've been in this for about eight, nine, ten years. So if you're paper right, you can do anything. I've been in it a year and a half. That's okay. It took mama a little while to come along, but she here. Like, I don't know, no. She's cheap. I can't help her. No, I was chasing crypto. I can't be oh, yeah. Man. If y'all on that crypto stuff, hit April BB on her channel. I'm thinking about making some shirts about Mr. Brando to wear a uniform. A <laughs> uniform. No uniform, please. Please, please. Okay. No shirt time required. I think that's it. I mean, it's okay, the same thing. We got 203 viewers in here, and I hate to cut you off, but it's getting late. Uh, me and Miss BB have early days tomorrow. We still work. Yes, yes. I love every one of y'all, and I, I hope every one of y'all reaches your dreams. So what is your game plan? Are you going to be back on Wednesday? Oh, no. You all have to know this right now. We are here every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday's my late night because I work late. Wednesday's a little earlier. Friday's a little earlier. We're trying to do about 7 p.m. podcast, right? On Wednesdays and Fridays, 7. That's fine. That's fine. 7, 7 30 latest. And I want you to, I want each of you 201 people to bring a friend. I want, we, we started off this, we had like three people. Then we went to like 80 people last time. Now we've doubled that 201 people. We started this, we had 600 views. I want y'all to share this. If you find us inaccurate, tell us. We'll correct it. Hey, babe, Gibson. She said, go H-Town. H-Town proud. Right. And please, y'all, I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm exhausted. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> we love y'all, and I appreciate each and every one of you sticking in late tonight. Um, hopefully, every blessing that you ever want to be will be. And thank you so much, and good night. Till next time. Peace. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, hold on. Like, comment, and subscribe. And hit the bell. And hit the bell so next time you'll be early and won't be up so late. All right. Deuces. And get